What's up, y'all? It's Questionable Reality, and today I have Milu, DJ, artist from Los Angeles, California. So, we got a DJ from LA. This is our first DJ on the podcast, you feel me? So, what's up with the DJ? Yeah, you feel me? Yeah, we yeah, give a round of applause, you know what I'm saying? So, Thank you for having me. Of course, of course. So, how did you get into DJing, you feel me? So, what's, you know, how'd you get into this? Let's just jump in right, right from there. Um, well, I've really always been into music. I think I'm sure that, you know, rings true for all of us. Um, but with Afrobeats and I'm a Piano becoming like really popular, I just got super into it. And then um, I'm a big fan of Uncle Waffles. Uncle Waffles. Yeah. And just watching, um, you know, their DJ sets on YouTube, just randomly coming across it. And then I was just like one day, hey, why not you okay. know, pick it up and try it? All right, and then Milu, I am just going to ask you just to scoot a little bit close to the mic, so like, keep, my bad, I've been saying this to the artist recently, so we yeah. can have perfect crisp audio, um, but yeah, I'll pop up all the stuff you just were talking about, too, so everybody gets a little gist of what's going on, so you've only been doing music for two years. Um, I started around March of last year, so it's been a little over a year. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right, cool, so you're still new to this, you're still trying yeah. to really feel it out, you know what I'm saying, so, yeah. okay, so you got inspiration from, you know, videos that you've seen on the internet before that kind of... Got you in the groove of it. You wanted to start doing it. Okay, cool. So what's your first piece of equipment that you picked up? You know, how did you get into the mix of it? Did you get a piece of software on your computer? Did you buy actual hardware? So how did you get? Yeah, and so I one? knew I had to get a controller. Okay. So went to Guitar Center. And the first day that I walked in there, I was just so overwhelmed because it's, like, so new to me. Um, didn't really know how to even maneuver around the source. I was, like, you know, walked out immediately. And then I was like, yeah, I could just order online. So I did some research. And so for everybody that's wondering, like, what's a, what's a controller? What, it's not like an Xbox controller. So we're talking about, like, the DJ consoles that you kind of see or controllers that you see. So yeah. you feel me? That's what we're talking about. Exactly. Um, but, yeah, so you got nervous. You ran out of guitar. So you're <laughs> like, screw this, bro. I'm not going to look. You know, first time being there, I feel you. It's like the first time me buying a camera. It's a huge store, the one on Hollywood. Yeah. Hell, yeah, for yeah. sure. Um, I can relate, though. The first time I was going to get, like, a camera lens, you feel me? I had to go out of the Best Buy. I was like, I don't, I don't know what I'm talking about. You yeah. feel me? Let me do more research. Um, but, yeah, so you get the controller. You know what I'm saying? So you start watching videos on how to use that controller. You start. Yeah. Okay, YouTube cool. University. I got you. Hands down. <laughs> Shout out YouTube University. You feel me? University like, always comes through. Of course. There's a lot of graduates I know from YouTube University. So you, okay, so you get the controller, you know what I'm saying? YouTube University up. So what's the first starter, like, DJ? Are you mixing? Are you, like, you know what I'm saying? What are you... Kind of just, like, playing around. What does this button do? What is this, you know? Fader in and out. Yeah, all of that. And then also learning the software as well, because that's a whole other... Step of it. Yeah. I feel... So. I definitely feel that. Um, I had a DJ set up when I was younger. It was Pioneer DJ, if you know, that, you know? So I did have a little... And I had a Nunmark, I think, Newmark. Newmark, yeah. yeah that's another one. Uh, console, but... I never really got into it, you feel me? It was like a 250 buck console, 300 console. Yeah. But, you know what I'm saying? I did have a little setup, you know what I mean? I was fucking with the fader in and out, you know what I'm saying? So I can kind of relate a little bit to that. So what what's one of your inspirations as you're learning all this? You know, who are you looking at besides that one channel that we were talking about beforehand? Is there a friend or a family member? Yeah, I would say most of it came from, you know, just watching. I got you. you know, <laughs> I aspire to be like them. Of course, starting off, I'm not at their you. level. Of course. Um, and I have a friend in New York, shout out to Spades. He's Spades. Yeah, and he's also a DJ as well. Um, and in the beginning, it was kind of hard for me to catch, like, a momentum, you know. I was kind of getting overwhelmed with having to learn the software, learning, you know, the knobs on, you know, what does this knob do on the controller and whatnot. Um, and once I kind of got a hang of it, like, you know, a basic feel of it, um, I was like, okay, let me just put together a mix and then start getting feedback and so I would send it to spades and he really took his time to actually listen and you know you should try this and you know give me pointers and went on to help me I feel you. well shout out spades that's what's yeah. up that's real that's no, love right there amazing, you know what I mean amazing you always need that friend or somebody to show you some support yeah. you know give you feedback on what you're doing to make sure you're going down the right path you know yeah. what I'm saying so that's what's up shout out spades um so once you start like kind of building your own because I feel like what you just explained right there you know what I mean like having to learn all this shit you know, you can learn so much through YouTube University, but it's like at the end of the day, a lot of it's personal. You know, you got to figure out how the hell you want to do it, Definitely. like, you know, on your own. So 
Definitely. So when did you start, like, kind of, like, how long did that take to where you got a little bit comfortable on the board, you know, like, started to find that, like, Milu swag on the DJ console? Um, maybe, like, a few months in. So initially, yeah, it was a lot of YouTube videos, right, trying to understand, you know, BPM and how to match up, yeah. you know, BPMs, how to sync songs together, with, like, the keys they have to be almost similar, understanding all of that. So when I got that down, then um, I would just – kind of look at you know videos to help with the transitions okay so how do you transition from one song to the next yeah. and then i would just get a gist and i'll just be like okay got it then a lot of it is just you have to practice that's how you get experience right yep that is definitely how to do true. it and then same with this podcast and shit like i remember i took a really long break from podcasts and it was like probably a good six month chunk off like just podcasting yeah. in general and getting back into it was so hard bro you know what i'm saying like just going up meeting new people you know what i mean just yeah just getting back into the groove of the whole podcasting thing. So I definitely, you know what I'm saying, just repetitive action, you know what I mean, building those grooves within your brain. So, you know what I'm saying, you know what you know what you're doing, you're hopping on. Exactly. But, uh, yeah, so definitely. we'll fast forward just a little bit, you know what I'm saying, because music is kind of new to you, you know what I mean? It's, it two, it's about going on two years. March is coming up quick, y'all, yeah, time is flying. Definitely. So paid gigs, you know what I mean, because I've seen you out and about, you know what I mean? So how are paid gigs looking like for you? Have you got one yet? Have you? I have. Okay. Um, What's your first paid gig looking like? And how did you get it? So it was actually my first gig. And it was um, at VUCA Lounge's after hour spot. Okay. Um, yeah. So your first gig was a paid gig? Yeah, it that's was. That's what's up. Kind of shocking. Yeah, no, that's, that's far as hell. Yeah. Randomly, I've been to that spot, you know, multiple times. But I guess the night that I went, ran into the owner and just, he walked us out. Okay. Happened to tell him, like, hey, I'm a DJ. And, like, you know, I would love to, you know, play here. And then he's like, okay. Pull up. <laughs> yeah, like maybe a week, week and a half later, he hit me up. That's what's up. That's fire. That's always lovely, especially when they actually hit you back up, too. Yeah. It's like, bro, say less. We we in there. Um, So how did it go for you? You know what I mean? Do you remember the vibes of the people? The first. Yeah. Uh, that was, I would probably play for about five minutes. Five minutes. But yeah, the first day, I, so I know, like at home, I know what I'm doing. I have my controller. I know how to plug it into my computer. And you're a little bit more and, comfortable. It's yeah. Cool. You know I mean? But then going into the venue, it's like, okay, what speakers do they have? What inputs? You know, how do I connect my controller yeah. to their speakers? And, you know. How is it going to sound on their speakers? Exactly. Yeah. So it Can was, I go this low on a bass? Can I go this high treble? I don't know. I, yeah. I don't know if I'm saying the right things, but. Yeah. Um. So a lot. <laughs> I would say the first two times that I did there, it was just kind of trial and error. Okay. And figuring out how to do all of that, like how to go into a club and set up. And I got you. So set up and everything, um, you know, for other DJs and, you know, alike, creatives alike. So you're bringing in, you know, just your console. Do you have like the little stand set up that they bring or is that provided for you? Are you bringing your own power sources? They have their own power sources, your own plugs, all that good stuff. No, for the most part, everything is there. At most, I probably just have to bring my own controller. Okay. Um, so for all DJs out there, you know what I mean? If you're looking to get booked for gigs, you know, just, you know, have your controller at hand. You know what I mean? If you're yeah. using software on the computer, that's super cool. But, you know, get that physical piece of equipment because. You boom. never know when you're going to need it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Private events can be different. They might ask you to, you know, bring your own. Set up and stuff. Speakers, yeah, yep. stands, all of that. Yep. And then that's when, if you guys are getting really, really deep into it, because I, um, I own my own production company on the side. So I have just endless equipment, random shit here, there, and the third. Um, yeah. So, like, if you have, if you're in the DJing, you know what I'm saying? You know, it'd be smart. Get a pair of speakers, you know, get a extra stand, you know, get some extra cords you might need. Because if you're serious about it, you know, exactly. it's always good to have this stuff on standby if you, just in case you do need it. You never know. Of course. So, um, you do your first show, you know what I'm saying? Feedback from the audience was great, you said. Well, that five first five minutes, I was kind of bummed because it just didn't go. It's like, planned. <laughs> yeah. Okay. How we planned it, but I did get um, a compliment. You know. Okay. Which is still awesome. That's dope. That's yeah. dope. And you got paid, so yeah, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. So okay, so cool. So it didn't go exactly as 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 you planned it, but it's your first gig, so you know yeah. who cares? You know, it is yeah. what it is. Just a learning experience. Definitely. Um, so you go home. You feel me? Are you inspired after this? Are you like, what? What's your plans? You're like, okay. Did you see what went wrong? Were you like, okay, I have to improve this? So what went wrong? What do you what do you think that you need to improve after? Um, I think it was more so just the connection wise from you know my controller to their speakers and stuff like okay. that, learning all the inputs and outputs. Um, yeah. So after that day, it was just like, okay, noted. Okay, I got you. Okay, I feel, I feel, I feel. Okay, so for moving forward from there, you know what I mean. 
You got that one compliment. Do you remember what they said? I'm sorry. Um, probably just like, oh, you did really good. Or, okay, that yeah, inspiration I like what, right I there. I like what you were playing, something like that. All right, so Milo, what music are you playing on the set? You feel me? Like, what are you, what are you bopping? Was it house music? Are we going hip hop? What are we going? Um, so I really love Afrobeats and I'm a piano. Okay, Afrobeats. Really? You're Afrobeat girl. I am. Type shit. I- but somehow I've just managed to get into more so the hip hop side of things, which is, <laughs> you know. It's dope still. I love it. It is. Dope. And I I don't think, like, if I, if it hadn't gone in this direction, I don't think I would have necessarily, like, played hip hop as a genre and, like, learned, you know. For sure. Um, yeah, to actually mix with that, which is. Sorry. Very much a learning point for me, which I'm happy. About. So, are you? Wh- what's your ethnicity? Are you African American? Are you? I'm East African. East Very African. Different. Okay. Okay. Cool. So that's where the yeah. Afrobeat kind of yeah. derives from. Okay. Nice. Definitely. Nice. Nice. So, you, okay. Have you always been into Afrobeat? Just ever since you were a child? Is this like playing throughout the house? You know what I mean? Mom playing it. Um. Well, yeah. We have our you know traditional music that we grew up listening to, and then my dad is a huge music lover, so I get a okay. lot of my taste from him. Um. So, yeah, he would play a lot of, you know, um, African artists. Dope. Yeah. That's what's up. Because I'm, uh, I could, you know, everybody already knows I'm African-American and Caucasian. So, you know, I had like, you know, just, it was basically just hip hop. And then it was like country music playing because I'm from Southern Maryland. So it was, wasn't too much of a mix, but I love to hear it. So Afro yeah. beats, you know what I'm saying? So that's like, that was your main focus. But now you're transitioning more into the hip hop scene of things. I think it's just more so the opportunities that I'm getting okay. are hip hop you know, oriented. Genre, yeah. Okay. Which I love. Yeah, yeah for I've sure. Come to love. Yeah, for sure. And we're like in L.A. too. You know what I'm saying? Like hip hop is a, there's every music scene is humongous out here. But hip hop is, you know, a, a really big, big pool. Guys, I had to do a little break. You feel me? I had to do a little bathroom break, camera break. So I do want to hop into something. I cannot pronounce this word to save. How do you pronounce it again? I'm a piano. I'm a piano. So I really want to get into that. You feel me? Because yeah. we're just talking about how it's, you know, it's low key taking over. You it feel is. me? So explain for the people what is I'm a, I'm a, I'm a piano. I'm a piano. Yeah. So explain what's, what's that? Um, it's a South African genre of music comparable to deep house, okay. their version of deep house. Um, yeah, a lot of, there's honestly within it, there's a lot of different takes you know, and styles, like, some of them are more, like, punk-ish. A lot of them have, like, jazz influence, and, okay. you know, that's where the, I think the piano comes from, if I'm not mistaken. I feel you. I was but, about to ask, I was like, does it have piano in it? It's like, I'm a, I'm a, pia- I'm a piano? Yeah, I'm, I'm a, a pia- piano. I'm a piano. Yeah. Yeah, so piano influence in there as well? Yeah, I would say, like, jazz influence. Okay. Um, and I'll pop up some stuff, too, here, some I'm a piano, so everybody can. Some, some, some stuff. Afro-punk, I would call it. That so we can see what's going on. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So that's dope as hell. So you're kind of are you focused in that lane at all? You know what I'm saying? Because that's the first time I've ever heard of that like genre. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean, I mean that's that genre. Just like I think that would be like the defining thing that got me into DJing because okay. just listening to it like it's just the soulfulness of it, and I could like really you know feel it. Okay, I feel um, you. And yeah. like you said, if it's nobody's really you know that could be some shit. You know that's me yeah. lose. That's her wave, you know. That's no your way. your yeah, your lane. I th- somewhat growing in you know L.A., but very popular in you know Africa. Like, have you ever traveled back to Africa, homeland? You know what I'm saying. Ha- I've gone to Africa, but not specifically my country. Yeah. Okay, okay. Do you like Africa? I love Africa. Okay. I would love to live there. I feel you, because people have yeah. bro. There's a lot of misconstrued you know ideas of Africa and America. So explain. Sure. So for somebody that's actually been over there, where what part did you visit? You know how was it? What was it like? Um, I went to Kenya, and it was beautiful. Okay. I went to Nairobi. Um, a lot of black people, which I loved. Amazing. Black people everywhere. Amazing. Loved it. Um, and I was a bit surprised of, like, you know, how similar it is to the United States. Like, they have big shopping malls. They have, <laughs> you know, luxury apartments. Things like that. Well, I given got- it is the capital city, so... Only reason I say that is because, you know, you get like I said, you know, America, you have a whole bunch of uneducated people, you know, misconstrued ideas of different places and shit. So, you know, I love to, you know, get the real people's perspectives that, you know, been there, traveled, all that good stuff. Yeah. So let's get back into DJ. So boom. So you're in America, you know, I mean you're pulling up, you got your first show done. So let's continue on that path. So you're so how are you finding these people, you know, to 
people up, host their parties. How how are you going about that? Is it through friends, through Instagram? You know what I'm saying? The first show, you said you've already been to that after hours lounge before. So how are you networking with these people to, you know, get these opportunities for yourself? Yeah. Um, Honestly, any chance that I get in meeting new people, like I try to put it out there that, you know, I'm a DJ. Okay. And then being at VUCA, um, that's how I got introduced to Briggs, who, shout out to Briggs. Yeah, who's Briggs? Briggs is also another DJ. Um, He is a legend out here. Okay. Yeah. Shout out Briggs, man. Amazing. Amazing. Um, yeah, he's built an amazing community dope, in dope. the space. Yeah. That is lovely to hear. So you meet Briggs, you know what I'm saying? You were, you know, DJing at the what was the lounge called again? At VUCA. At so, VUCA Lounge. Yeah, Friday nights is Briggs Night. Okay. Um, and then from there, um, he gave me the opportunity to open up at the deep end, which he does on Fridays. Dope, as dope. well at the Delphi. Okay. Yeah. Nice. So those, you know, doing those performances, not performances, but sets at those um, clubs and venues, those are, are there's other people, you know, they're watching oh, you yeah. as well. So, that, you sure. know, that's bringing the attention. Okay, cool. Yeah. That's what's up. Yeah. So from those opportunities, did you end up meeting anybody, you know, from that scene through that way, you know, somebody walking up to the crowd? Hey, can you DJ my party? Like, you know, are you, you're fire as hell. Um, definitely the other DJs. Okay. Yeah. I feel. We're all, you know, talking to each other if they have an event that they need, you know, a DJ for. Um Gotcha. Hopefully when I get to that point, I'll definitely I return the favor as well. Yeah, no, for sure. And I like to, I got literally love to ask these, like, it's like, sounds like a weird question, but you know, for any other DJ that's watching this, you know, it's yeah. like, cause some of them are lost, you know, some of them have no right. friends within the scene, you know? So it's like, you know, if you're trying to follow a path, you know what I mean? To get into doing venues, you know, playing your own sets at shows, you know, there's, there's a little linear line you could follow right here, guys. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. So. You meet Briggs. So can you tell me a little bit more about him? Because you said he's a major, you know, piece upon in this, like, whole DJ scene down here. Because I've never heard him before. I'm not a DJ. Yeah. So what is his main thing? Does he bring community? To, like, does he bring new DJs into the community? Is that what he's known for? Or what is he really known for? Um, well, he is a DJ. Okay. You know, as well. Um, and then he also, he hosts the Delphi, which is, you know, his event. And then he also So that's has, his, that's his shit. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then... Um, Friday nights, he also has the after hours at VUCA, okay. which is his thing. Gotcha. Um, and then now he has Apartment 200, the Blacklist, with um, Wolf and Dirty. Mm. Yeah. Okay. I know Apartment 200. I have some friends that have DJed there before, uh, but, like, for Thousand Band Fani, you know, pulled up to the show there, a little, you know, pop-up show. Uh, shout out Kenshin Ernie, you feel me? But... Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, this that's so crazy. DJ yeah. is so wild. It so is. I have, what's that one movie, bro? Like, when I, I swear, when I was younger, it was like, there was a movie that fucking had, not Zac Efron. I think it might have been Zac Efron. Uh, come on, you're a DJ. You have to know this. I'm not sure. Oh, my gosh. I'll pop it up right here. We'll get up, We'll get off the topic. But amazing movie, you feel me? It always just made me put, like, it put DJs in a great light for me. I was like, yeah. y'all are so fucking cool. Yeah, like, what for the hell? Sure. Um, um, so, and my, then one more thing about Briggs. Like, for sure. Just going back to the community builder, like, um, really respect the space that he's created for, you know, all of us to come together and, like, genuinely have a good time. And the connections that we're able to make, like, literally met DZ through through all that. Um, And being able to network with other DJs and that leads to more opportunities. The exposure that he's giving us, you know, it's incredible. That's what's up, man. Shout out Briggs. And that's why I really want to get into that because, you know, there's a lot of people, you know, that are, you know, great doing cool things, but it's like if you're really bringing the community together like that, that's what we need, you know what I'm saying? Cuz LA is full of a lot of people, you know. You you're from LA, but I'm personally not from LA, so, you know, if I was a DJ, you know what I mean, I would need somebody to, you know, help me out like that. I would love yeah. that. You know what I'm saying? So shout out Briggs like we said. Yeah. Um, but I see you on Instagram a lot. I see you posting your content, you feel me, I running do. up your bag. Only trying to. You feel me? Um. So, what inspired you to do more like the? Cause I see you like the. I keep on talking about the fader. You feel me? So you're doing like your Milu mixes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I fuck with it. We'll pop up a few right here. So what inspired you to start dropping all this content left, right, center? What's up with that? Um. More. Are you talking about like the? Just reels. Cause I've been seeing oh, your reels. Yeah. Hella. Yeah. I mean, you gotta put, you gotta put stuff out there. Right? I feel. What, what was it that you said to DZ? Uh. I said so much to DZ Twin. <laughs> yeah. Um, like, you know, just like pushing more yeah. content and just for sure. put in those, what was it, 10,000 hours or something along those lines. Mm, okay. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, and I, say, 
and same here, you know, like, you know, if everybody, because I've had um, people, you know, talk to me like, yo, you've been going crazy with the content left, right, and center. It's like, you know what? There's so much free time within a day. It's like, and bro, AI especially, I'll give you a little bit of saucy sauce. We feel me? AI especially, you know, like if y'all aren't able to flood, you're bullshitting. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah. this shit is so at our fingertips, you know what I mean? Yeah. Especially with me working two jobs, you know what I mean? And still ha being able to do all this shit on the back end. Um, it's just like, man, you know, it's like it's seeing other people complain about this shit. I don't even listen to it anymore. It's like, yo, yeah. you're just bitching. Like, you know, you're bitching and complaining. Yeah. And, you know, just get, get in your bag, bro. It's so easy. Five minutes. Literally. Ten minutes, you know. But that's why I love talking to, you know, people like you, like DZ, like, you know, everybody that I'm talking to, bro, because it's we're all in that same mentality of just fuck yeah. the bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. Like, it's time to get to it. Definitely. And that's your, you know, as creators, that's your resume. like For yeah. sure. For sure. If you oh, can't look back and see it. consistency, then it's like, right. what are you, you know what I mean? Right. Shows shows what your character really is. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so you feel me? The reels, the Instagrams, the this, the that, the third. I've actually come a long way from that because I've been off of social media for, I would say, a good maybe three plus years. I got you. Okay. Yeah. So you, okay. And just, I was not a big fan of it at all. Why is that? Can we get into that a little bit? Why is um, that? I think for me, it just took away from, like, being in the moment and constantly seeing, you know, other people on their phone, like, taking a picture of their food instead of... Actually right, enjoying it. Right, you know, or, like, everyone's on their phone when if there's five people around you and it's, um, I not feel. like, that aspect of it. I feel. And it's, like, another thing, too, is, like, just the... With me, personally, the instant gratification of some yeah. shit, because, like I said, you are posting, or not, but I'm posting a lot, and one thing that I really have to watch out for is, like, you know, just kind of feeling let me let me word this correctly kind of feeling like i'm not doing the right thing if i'm not posting right you know what i'm saying like yeah. at the end of the day like i tell all my friends like i didn't come down to la to do a podcast like respectfully i came down here to get my production company up and running which is it's currently happening you know it's working out you know what i mean it's everything's going smoothly right. so it's like that's all i really came down here to worry about all this extra shit that i'm adding into my life it's like Bro, calm down. You know what yeah. I mean? So it's like the social media, the podcast, the clips. Like, that's literally all bullshit. I love it. It's yeah. a, like I told hella people before, you know, I like I said, I work two jobs. So when I get to sit down with people like you, people like, you know, DZ, um, you know, anybody, you know, shout out Havoc, shout out Geo, anybody, bro. It's like, this is a time for me to de-stress. You know, I get right. to fucking talk. Yeah. I don't got to be all professional. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, so that's why I like this shit. You know what I mean? Uh, so it's like, if it has to stop. Cause my business, he's it's like, bro, it's okay. You know what I mean, like, cause I used to really just drain myself and like, bro, you're not posting, you're not doing this, you're not you doing know, that. That takes away from you know enjoying it. Exactly, you know what yeah. I mean, and that's kind of why I had to take that extended break we were talking about, cause I had to get refocused on like what, get just realigned with what the fuck I wanted to do right. in my own life. But I feel that. Yeah, that was deep, some deep shit right yeah, there. You know what I'm saying? Very so. Deep shit. So Milu's been off of social media for a good three years. She had to take the break, you feel me, as we all do sometimes. So how are you really promoting your shit? Is it just through, like, face-to-face -face interactions then? Yeah, definitely networking and then, you know, as much as I can, trying to put my stuff out, whether okay. it's on SoundCloud or... That's awesome. And then we'll pop up your SoundCloud, too, just so everybody gets a nice view of that, all that good stuff. Yeah. So yeah. Milu, I'm sorry, I just cut you off. What were you about to say? <laughs> I said check it out. Check that shit out, y'all. So, Milu, you feel me? Um, so, what's going on? What's going on with, like, projects, your uh, personal mixes you're dropping on SoundCloud? Is there anything that you're, like, really, really proud of? You know what I'm saying? Honestly, all of them. I think looking back um, from the first one that I put out and just, like, the growth. Still the growth, yeah. Yeah, huge. I feel you. Really that, huge. That's how I feel looking at, like, the beginnings of this shit. Like, listening to the first episode, it's like, bro, I'm so happy we are down the line now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because, whew. Yeah, <laughs> the progress is real. Yeah, that's factual. Mm -hmm. Um, so damn. All right, guys, we're gonna take one little break again. All right, y'all. So we had to take a little break. You feel me? But for you personally, like, what are any notes that you have for them? Like, you know, it could be notes of inspiration. You know, things that you should be doing, things that you shouldn't be doing. Like, what do you think that? What's going on with that? Put in the work, practice for sure. Okay. Um, and I think if you really love it, it'll come to you. You know, naturally, you'll want to spend a lot of time and. Try to be better. Okay. Always. Okay, I got you. And that's that's real shit. You feel me? It's like football or anything. Well, you don't. I mean, you, you didn't play football. You didn't play yeah. football. Some girls play football. I have to ask nowadays. Yeah. Um. Yeah, but no. Fucking. Take your time. 
Yeah, you got to yeah, find little ways that you can like grow within it and challenge yourself. There's so much to learn. Yeah. I got you. There's layers to it. It's like an onion. Like Shrek. It just keeps killing. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't stop. Okay. That's dope. Yeah. Um, so we do have a lot of we got a lot of information, you feel me? I feel like if you are a DJ and you are watching this, like there's gems to find in here. You know what I'm saying? You could pick this shit apart and honestly, you know, get your get your DJ career started if you yeah. wanted to. Um so hardships within DJing, you know what I'm saying? Can I uh, can I ask you about that? So like what is we like we went into easy shit, we went into like fun shit, but what's like what's hard? What makes you want to stop? What makes you want to like like fuck this, dude? Yeah. Like I've definitely had my low moments. Um and then what gets you through those moments too, actually? Sorry to add yeah. on to that question. I got you. I'm gonna spill all of it. Cool. Um, um let's see. Probably the self comparison, you know. Looking at other DJs and being like, for the most part, I'm very much um, inspired by them and appreciate their craft. But sometimes, you know, you know, we all have our moments where you can get in your head and you can have that self doubt, like, oh, I'm not that good or I'm not as good. And um, yep. I just yeah. looked at somebody else's podcast page yesterday and I had those same thoughts. I'm yeah. like, why the? F-? And very, then it's like, like real. I said, you know, it's not not the main thing, but continue. Yeah, very, very real. Um, and it happened to me not too long ago, um, probably earlier this month. And afterwards, like, it affected me during my set, you know, to the point where I was kind of messing up a few transitions, very minor, but, you know, you're so much harder on yourself than other people sure. are, and you're going to remember it more than, you know, other people will. Um, and after that, I just kind of had to, like, have a talk with myself and be like, listen, why did you start doing this? Because you love it. Just go out there every moment, do your best, and take it one thing at a time. And it doesn't matter if there's, you know, one person listening, two people listening, if it's an empty room, it's just, it doesn't matter. That's real. You're here because you love it, and that's it. That's real. And that here, sorry guys, I gotta turn off my ringer. And that's real shit, you feel me? It's like, like I said, even with the podcast page, I just was looking at somebody else that was probably, you know, 10 times more down the line than I am. And I'm like comparing myself to this guy. It's like, what the fuck? You know, you're just starting off. You know what I mean? So it's like, um, yeah. Appreciate your, you know, what you've done so far. Definitely. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter if there's two views that there's, you know, 15, um, it's definitely grown from then. Uh, But, but yeah, no, like you said, bro, it's like, you gotta, you know, you gotta just, you know, be humble. Yeah, for sure. Um, so, you know, DJing, is this the only thing that you've wanted to, like, is this the only thing that you've ever wanted to do? Was Milu like a different, was there a different path for Milu earlier in life? Yes, definitely. Um, I knew I was always like creative and, uh, you know, I have, I'm a serial hobbyist. Like okay. at one point I was making jewelry and I still want to get into that. For sure. Point. I think I just got caught up into like making it a business and that kind of took the fun out of it for me. Yeah, that that and, takes the fun out know, of everything. It really does. It really fucking does. It really does. But I still love it and I'll do it from time to time. Um, <laughs> Hopefully, in the future, it can turn into something bigger. We'll see. For sure. Um, but, yeah, I've always been creative, but was never, like, pushed in that direction or, like, supported in that direction. I got you. So, having East African parents, were they strict? Like, what was oh, yeah, very strict. <laughs> okay, so, like, if you were the voice that you were like, I want to be a DJ, yeah. they'd be like, that fly. shit's dead. Like, not I'm gonna not, <laughs> not going to fly. Okay. Yeah. They very much um, push, you know, academics and doctor lawyer engineer got you damn that's hard Those top three that's hard yeah especially if that's not like really something you're interested in you know that's 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 a hardship you got to go through as a kid because i was go ahead because i was pushed you know in many different areas military was like because my stepdad he's military yeah um, i went to military school for um some time uh like i said my stepdad's military so once i was out of all that shit you know i was really like you know you're not finna be doing anything bro go to the military you're not right. finna be the, it's like what are you talking about yeah. You know, really, like, confu- misconstruing, like, what, you know, even my own thoughts of, like, trying to figure out what I wanted to do with myself as a child. Right. So I can kind of relate to that in a way, yeah. just having overlord feeling type of, they're wonderful people. I love my stepdad. I love my mom. Mm-hmm. The shit that I went through as a kid was needed because I was a little badass. But, <laughs> you know, kind of being blocked off from different creative thoughts and avenues, I can relate to that. Yeah, for sure. Um, but, yeah, I was very good academically. You seem smart. You seem very smart. Thank you. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, <laughs> <laughs> not to toot my own horn, but 
Um, yeah, I was very good academically. And then, you know, coming straight out of high school, going into college, I think I was just so burned out after I graduated. And I just... I Once you know. graduated, how, or college or high school? College. Okay. College. What, um, what did you major in in college? Philosophy. And where did you go to college at? UCLA. Oh, shit. Yeah. Gangster. So UCLA. <laughs> Bro, if y'all don't know UCLA, like, they, they advertise it to be such, like, a uh, beautiful, wonderful, like, you go there, you know. Bro, I've done so many events at UCLA. Y'all motherfuckers are crazy, bro. <laughs> y'all are crazy as shit. Um, continue, sorry. But, yeah. <laughs> so, I think I was just so over, like, I literally did school my whole, you know, up until that point. Yeah. That's, you know, that was the main thing. Avenue for you. That, right? was, that was your shit. Yeah, so I think I was just, like, like I can't. My mind is fried. <laughs> I feel you. Fried. So, you know, once you get out of high or once you get out of college, this burnout kind of occurs. You're like, fuck. Yeah. So this is like when the you, you kind of had room to open up those creative doors and outlets. Oh, and for shit. sure. Okay. Yeah. And I feel like this is a good way to kind of de-stress from all those built up years of, mm-hmm. you know, kind of having to fucking, like you said, academia, you know what I mean? Studying to be what you... Uh, Philosophy is what you yeah. went to college for. You know, that's a lot of reading. That's a lot of, yeah. like you said, Very studying intense. and shit. Yeah, so whew, to take a step back, you know, yeah. getting into music and stuff. Like, people, you know, call music a drug. You know, it's a soothing, you know, whatever you're listening to, of it course. Is. But um, I feel like this is a, a good avenue, a good way for you to de-stress from all that shit that you've built up for through sure. those years. Yeah. So what's up? And I love the, like, infinite nature of it. There is just so much. So much, so Literally. much you can do with it, and it just never ends. And that's something that we can get into, too. Like, I, bro, it's something that really pisses me off, bro. Like, when I'm in the car, you know, you got your homies or, like, one genre fucking with, like, just rap. Yeah. It's like, bro, y'all only fuck with this. <laughs> it's like, y'all, like, that's how, you, I'm not going to say people that fuck with one genre are small-minded overall, yeah. but it's like, you can really tell somebody's, like, you know, how far their horizon is, you know what I'm saying, just by what music they listen to and what they're only playing through the speakers. Because it's like, if you don't, if you just, like, rap and I put on house music and you're like, bro, turn this little stupid shit. I was like, yeah. what the fuck? Yeah. It's like, you don't understand. There's so many different. Right. like the whole universe, yeah. E- exactly. <clears throat> Sorry, guys. Exactly. That's Tuscany water, brother. Got some. <laughs> um, but, yeah, no. Music is such a variety. And it's like a, each genre is almost like a different drug. And it that's we- kind of weird to, you know, relate to in that sense. But it's like, yeah. you know, go try it all. Literally. You know what I mean? Not in real life. Don't go try it with drugs. <laughs> but, you know, if music is... You know, just keep Very your ear powerful. open is all I got to say. For sure. Evokes a different emotion, something out of you, you know? Yep. Yeah. Very powerful. Definitely. And it's just like, man, I don't know. That's just crazy. You know, some people can only really stick with one genre their whole life. Yeah. Uh, so. you the me, waters. What does Milu like to do for fun? What are you doing besides DJing? You know what I'm saying? What are you doing? T- you're you're a <laughs> magician? She does magic. You have a pen and paper? I'm, a, I'm an amateur magician. Well, really? No fucking way. Hold up, hold up, y'all. We're going to do a pause real quick. We're going to do a pause, and we're going to give her some shit so she can show us. All right, guys, we're back. You feel me? Got the piece of paper. We got the pen. Let's get it. Magic trick Blank. from me, Lou. Right. This is my infamous party trick. Okay. I'll be blowing people's minds with this. Mind blown. Here, let me, I'm going to get beside the camera to make sure we get a good view. We'll see if you're blocking or not, Lou. No sleight of hand, no nothing going on here. Gamers? Yeah, you, she, I don't know oh, I'm a pool. Play me in pool. Okay, you ready? Okay. Um, think of a girl's name, but don't tell me. Okay. You got it? That's how I know you. You really are a Libra, bro. You already know what's up. <laughs> Uh, this is my guess. Okay, now tell me what it was. I'm going to block this part out. Casey. All right. And this is what you told me. Okay, now think of a girl's name. Um, I'm sorry, a boy's name. But don't tell me. Okay. You got it? Is this? 
Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now tell me what it was. Okay, now choose between salt and pepper, but don't tell me. You got it? Okay, what was it? Okay. All right. Now you can look at what I guessed versus what you told me. (laughs) 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 The music is so dramatic. Hey, man, we're about to get you right. So I'm going to look at what she, okay, what she thought. <laughs> I wasn't playing around. That says Anthony right there. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> the camera's not showing it, but we'll, we'll do the video if it gives you. That just shows fucking Anthony, bro. What can I say? America's Got Talent, hit me up. (laughs) And y'all saw she crumbled these papers up before I told her anything. Yeah. That's getting blanked out, but girl. Yeah, no, we we, we don't get that one out. What the hell? And I opened these up so they could see for real. Like, they could see that. It's crazy. It all matches. So how did you... Okay. <laughs> How did you do that? <laughs> you know, it's just in my jeans. Did you, cr- I was did you crumple this? Were you writing it down as you? No, I, I, as you, you know, thought it, I wrote it down. My, you know, You're guess. lying. You're a liar. <laughs> She's a liar. She's a liar. Yo, you're not lying to me. Yo, what the fuck? Not That's so crazy. <laughs> what the fuck? That's so. Not at all. Mm, I've been I don't nothing know. but honest this entire time. Nah, you're lying to me, dude. Do not start lying now. Okay. I don't know how to feel about that, bro. <laughs> but if everybody just saw those papers, she laid them out beforehand. She wrote on them. She laid them out. Those were all crinkled up right there. Nobody fucking touched them. Yeah. Right here. That's when I... What were you, yeah, there's video me. evidence of it. Yeah. What the fuck was that? Back. You just scared me with that shit. <laughs> um... So, yeah, Milu, I'm going to be real nice to you. You feel me? I don't yeah. want no voodoo shit happening to don't me. Don't play with me. My eyes start burning at work. What the fuck <laughs> going on, bro? Milu spraying my doll yeah. with bleach spray in my no, eye no, and no. shit. Um, I have to work on my craft. I haven't gotten that far. I'm still an amateur. Oh, yeah. shit, man. So maybe if this DJ thing, God forbid, it doesn't work out, I still have other okay. avenues I could pursue. Fuck. She's joking. She's joking. <laughs> yeah, the D- DJing is, is, I mean, hey, bro, you feel me? You don't want her to start fucking with this shit. Yeah. That's all I got to say. <laughs> Yeah, don't um, let me be a magician. But yeah, so that was that's that's cool as fuck. Yeah. I'm not, that was crazy, but that was that's cool as hell. You feel me? Pull that out of the party, bro. You're yeah. blowing minds. Niggas yeah. drinking and shit, bro. Literally. What the fuck? Music stops and everything. Like yeah, bro. Yeah. Um, so I do have. We got like five more minutes left. Uh, we got three more minutes realistically. So, what are you trying to build with? You know what what cult, what community are you trying to bring and build with everything that you're doing with the DJ? You know what yeah. are you trying to what are you trying to bring to the table with this? Um, I definitely want to continue, you know, what's going on right now. I think there's a lot of, you know, events happening and a lot of people, um, you know, bringing people out and creating spaces where, you know, we can all mingle and interact with each other, which is amazing. So I definitely want to continue that. Um, And then also just making sure that we're getting paid adequately. Okay. Yeah, I would definitely love to see all the DJs win in that sense. you You, You know what I can see for you? This is just me being in, uh, intuitive. I can literally see you, like, you know, down the road, you know, owning your own venue. You know what I'm saying? Amazing. You'll have your own, you know what I'm saying? You're the curator of the events, you know what I'm saying? The DJs coming through, you know, what pop-ups, you know, whatever, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. I can really see that shit for you, you know what I mean? If you want to bring that type of community to the, you know, bring in the pay, you're handling that, you know what I'm saying? You get to choose and pay. Like, that would be very beautiful, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, I'm not going to go too deep into the plans for the lunchbox, but I can see that aligning for you. Yeah, definitely inspiring, you know, 
keep that, you know, in my future for sure. For sure. Um, and then just having a lot of other creatives involved in that as well. You know, not only a space for DJs, but whether you're, you know, doing podcasts or YouTube videos or a singer or, you know, a painter, you know. The versatility within the creative world. Yeah, and I definitely want that to be very inclusive. I feel you. So, Milu, we're down to our last minute, you feel me? Plug what you got, you feel me? I'll fuck with you. You're cool as hell. You got good shit coming in your future, you know what I mean? Yeah. Keep on working. You got this shit. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, definitely check out my mixes on SoundCloud. Give me some love. <laughs> um, and then Saturdays, we're at Apartment 200, the blacklist, so pop out. There. I'm going to pop that all up. SoundCloud, we're going to pop up the flyer for Apartment 200. And yeah, Milu, oh yeah, we're going to pop up your SoundCloud too. But Thank Milu, you. I fuck with you. We're going to go with the dap up as we always hey. do. Yeah. Thank you so much. Of course. I love being here. Thank you. Thank you. And we're out of here. Peace. Hey, bye.